Hello, my name is Martin Chow. Today, I'm here with Grace Leong to speak about Dodger Shipton and for Grace to share her experience having practiced Dodger Shipton now for a few years. Grace is a qualified chartered accountant. She is also the principal and art director of Grace Salon. Grace is, a, is married and is a mother of two young adult children. So Grace, welcome. Hi Martin. Now, can you tell us a bit about your life before you came across Buddhism? Oh, I was born a Buddhist. Yes. Um, but what exactly is a Buddhist at that time for me was just about visiting temples a few times a year and doing some rituals. Yeah. Really more superstitious than anything else. I met uh, Sam Rinpoche uh, about six years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I attended the Kachara function mm -hmm. and Rinpoche was giving a uh, teaching. And then after that, I, the, first, the first department that I was uh, uh, more heavily involved with was with the Kachara Soup Kitchen. Right. And, and I, uh, we still go as a family. And yeah, we, we spent six years uh, volunteering in the soup kitchen. Having been a Buddhist for quite some time, what was it about meeting Rinpoche? What is it about Kachara that made you take up the practice a bit more seriously? Rinpoche was, um, from onset, I mean, he was, he was special. I mean, he, um, you attend his talks and you know that um, everything he says about is real. It's, it applies uh, to everybody's life. It's um, not superstition. It's, uh, it, it's something where people can learn about themselves mm -hmm. and also learn um, how to um, adapt uh, to, to living, I mean, to living life, basically. So what you're saying is th th there's certain element of truth or rather there's a lot of truth in, in what Rinpoche taught and what he, in, in the things he said that resonated with you? Yes, very much so. And when did you come across the practice of Dojo Shipton? And can you tell us something about how you came across that and, and how your practice has been since? I started practicing Dojo Shipton um, probably about three years ago. Mm -hmm. In the duration of my practice, I mean, I've, I've seen um, what Dojo Shipton can do uh, for many people. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of people coming, um, into Doji Shikdan practice, learning about the teachings, doing the mantras, doing the pujas, and it's actually helped them to uh, remove uh, problems, which for example, like spirit attacks, um, they have also um, managed to help them to counter depression. So you have actually seen changes in people yes. after they have, yes. uh, from spirit attacks to curing or rather healing some emotional or, or mental ailments that they've been suffering with? Yes, I mean these are real people, I mean people that I know of that they were attacked by spirits and uh, they've actually come to um, ask for help and when they got the Doji Shikdun practice, the mantras and, and, and um, the other teachings, I mean um, they improve uh, Can in you tell situation. us a bit about that? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. A, a bit about how, in your opinion, they improve. Well, you, 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 it's obvious uh, when you look at them that when they first come in, knowing that they have some alien thing on them, which or experiencing some, mm -hmm. you know, uh, something extraordinary that they can't cope with that causes suffering to them. When they have done the pujas you can see and you can feel, they feel and they, they will share with me as well that they have actually um, feel there were less attacks, mm -hmm. they sleep better, mm -hmm. they have better relationships with their families, better relationships with their spouses. Uh, I mean, um, life changes around for them. It, it takes time, it's not an instantaneous thing, but with faith, with um, consistency, it actually helps. From a personal experience, I, I just came to learn that even now your son, Matthew, has been hospitalized and he was warded about yesterday, having mm -hmm. suffered from dengue. And I understand from you also that Dodger Shikdan has helped him recover this time. Can you tell us a bit about that? Matthew, my son, is 17 years old and he was diagnosed with dengue fever about eight days ago. Well, we stayed at home uh, trying to nurse him and for about five days 
and every day his platelets starting dropping 50 to 60,000 points every day. Um, I mean, it's very, very worrying as a parent. Uh, dengue is something which is uh, uh, very rampant now in Malaysia. I mean, the statistics that are shown actually that um, dengue is uh, it, it, it's more fatal than it was ever before. When you are a parent, we, you have to understand this that if there was anything, you'd rather be the dengue patient. Yes. <laughs> and um, how then am I going to be a parent if the dengue patient was my son, whom mm -hmm. I love so much? So it, it, I, I had to stay calm, and, and Matthew had to stay calm as well. I mean, the rest of the family as well. And we resorted to doing uh, pujas, we resorted to doing mantras. At a certain level, uh, it's compulsory to be warded in the hospital. Yes. And uh, when Matthew was uh, warded in the hospital, uh, he started bleeding from his nose. Mm -hmm. uh, hemorrhaging dengue is fatal. Mm -hmm. So any form of hemorrhaging in any part of the body is not positive at all. He Quite was profusely. bleeding for very profusely for four hours mm -hmm. in so-called a nosebleed. Nobody bleeds for four straight hours, I mean profusely. Mm -hmm. The ENT had to come and stuff something up his nose to stop his bleeding, mm -hmm. but it was still continuing, uh, though, though it slowed down. Mm -hmm. uh, there were, we had to, I mean, uh, Rinpoche was very, very kind. He uh, actually prescribed pujas. He did a so doje shudan puja. Right. Yeah. He, okay. I understand it's a special yes. puja for and removal of uh, such obstacles. And mm -hmm. what happened after that? Um, the, the bleeding stabilised, it was still bleeding, but it slowed down tremendously. Um, that Matthew started to rest a bit more, uh, he relaxed a bit more, but I continued to do the kansha next to his bedside. The kansha being the prayer to clear obstacles yes. and problems, yes. Correct, yeah. And, um, you know, you just have to hold on to the fact that, you know, we have to wait for the results to come out to see that, um, that, that things uh, improve or not, or what are the next steps to go about. How is Matthew right now? Oh, Matthew is uh, much different now, today. He got up and asked for a very heavy breakfast. He has not eaten for many days uh, mm -hmm. a substantial meal. That, to me, as a mother, is a great sign. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of his blood test results, uh, the platelets had turned around. So basically now, it's on uptrend. It's not um, going down anymore. And um, um, his so, bleeding has yes. uh, stopped tremendously. There is very, very slight bleeding. Um, but the doctors want to keep him in the hospital for another day or so for observation. And if he's fine, then he will be discharged tomorrow. Would you say this is just coincidence or do you believe that the Georgia Shudra Puja made a big difference? To me, definitely, in terms of the timing of the Pujas, the timing of the blessings from the Guru, you can actually see that it, it was not just coincidence. Not it's by definitely chance. Not by chance. Because there's a marked difference yes. before and after. Yes, but I also want to say, right, even if people don't believe in such things, what I've gone through the last eight days, I had tremendous support from so many people, whether they were friends, uh, relatives, they were Dharma brothers and sisters. And, and the, many of these people that gave me support, whether in terms of well wishes, in terms of dedications, in terms of pujas, sponsoring pujas, uh, gifts, anything, many of them were Doja Shukdan practitioners. To me, whether or not you want to believe uh, you know, the powers of Doja Shukdan, I relate to the powers of love, care, and kindness, generosity that was given to me in the last one week. Kindness being a very common characteristic with people who practice Doja Shukdan, is what you're saying. Yes. But here's the thing, Grace. There are so many deities, so many Buddhas, so many protectors in the Tibetan Buddhist pantheon. Doja Shukdan is one that you know has been engulfed in some controversy. And yet, you have very strong faith in Doja Shukdan. Can you tell us why and, and share a bit about more experience about why, in spite of the controversies, you still regard Doja Shukdan as a Buddha, as Manjushri, and continue to have such tremendous faith in Doja Shukdan? I actually want to share like what um, 
some of the things I've seen with, uh, on my own, I mean, when you are a dojo shikdun practitioner, luckily not so much in Malaysia, but people maybe who are Tibetans or anywhere else, physically, mentally, verbally abused for being a DS practitioner. They go through broken marriages that, you know, uh, among the families, they, among the spouses, they are, one is for Dojo Shiden, one is against, and, and they decide because of a practice and a belief, they don't count on the love mm -hmm. and support that they have for each other. Broken families, broken marriages, uh, people who have gone through uh, physical abuses, right? They were basically, uh, they, they lost a lot of their properties. They also go through uh, verbal abuses, um, you know, they were mentally, uh, tortured in, in that sense, and yet having suffered so much, and yet having sacrificed so much, they keep to their practice. They stay very steadfast in their faith. Um, to me, all that is, is uh, living Dharma. Right. So, the, the, from your observation, that despite being, well, quite a bit of oppression, yes. quite a bit of discrimination, that these people behave as if they have the Dharma. And, and these people are the practitioners of Doji Shikdan. How has the practice helped you personally in terms of your, um, the way you think, the way you feel, your outlook towards life? Actually, I'm very inspired by all that's happening, um, whether it's locally or stories I, I watch uh, or I see or watch uh, abroad or anything like that. I think in all our lives, we, we, come, we come across challenges, whether there's, they're small challenges or big challenges, but when you have something with you, uh, for me, um, that, that, that something is my guru, my dharma protector, Do Shrikdan, my dharma. I mean, having these three things in my life, it's a great asset if you want to look at it in the materialistic but it's more than just asset it's something that helps me to move on uh, to improve myself and um, for me to it, it may be a bit of a striving to move forward to change certain things which I don't like about myself but um, after all this I, I actually like very much the new me that I discovered in summary you, you don't quite believe all the things said about Dojo Shikdan, all the negative things said about Dojo Shikdan. I can't believe because the people that I, uh, the Dojo Shikdan practice, uh, practitioners that I have as friends or associates or teachers or whatsoever, um, they don't show me anything negative. Well, at least nothing more than I would get in the secular world. I mean, whatever I get from them, it's been consistently lots of kindness and care. In other words, you cannot deny your very personal and real experience with the practice of Dojo Shikdan. Yes, it's real. Thank you, Grace. Thanks, Martin. So we have heard from Grace Leong, a professional, logical, rational person, how Dojo Shikdan has helped many people that she's introduced the practice to. Dozo Shikdan has helped people overcome spirit disturbances, marital problems, business problems, and most recently, we have heard how Dozo Shikdan has helped save Matthew, a grace son. But this is not surprising because Dozo Shikdan is by nature a Buddha who will help anyone, whoever he can, whether you practice him or you don't practice him. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.